Hello everyone, welcome back to techtrude.com. So let's understand what are the problems with simple two-phase locking. So here you can see that we have three problems listed which we talked earlier in the previous lecture. So the first one is unnecessary or early lock which leads to the less CPU utilization. Next is deadlock that in this particular locking protocol deadlock may happen and cascading rollback. Okay, so this cascading rollback may also occur when we are going for two-phase locking protocol. So let's start it with uh, understanding with examples. So first one is unnecessary or early lock. So let's say it is very simple to understand. Let's say we have transaction T1 and T2 and generally when transactions are there you have too many processes okay so now a transaction t1 acquires a early lock on or it is basically exclusive lock okay so lock x on data item a fine and then it reads the data item then maybe write data item a okay and then the job of A is over. Now it acquires another lock, let's say exclusive lock uh, or uh, yeah, exclusive lock on some data item, let's say B and so on, it goes on, right? But this transaction cannot release this lock at this point, okay? This lock cannot be released, okay? Because as we know that while in growing phase, we cannot release any lock right so see here also one lock is acquired and let's say i have if i have 10 such operations then until the 10 operations are executed i cannot release this lock okay so till all right operation are done okay then until then we cannot release the locks right now we have to hold this variable as locked Meanwhile, if transaction T2 wants to acquire a lock on, let's say, even a shared lock because it wants to read, so it just want a share lock on data item A to read, but it cannot because it already have exclusive lock by T1, right? And then it has to wait, right? So until all the operations are finished, it will be waiting, fine? And this is basically unnecessary wait just because of this early lock on the data, right? So this is our first point that in this kind of locking protocol, we can have unnecessary wait due to early lock, okay? So this is our first point, okay? Now let's come to second one, which is deadlock. So for this also, we will take an example. Here you can see that we have a given sheet schedule here using two transactions t1 and t2 and you can see that it has some locks in between right it is using simple two-phase locking protocol right so I have shown initial transactions okay initial operations of the transaction okay and this is how it proceeds so let's see how it goes this is transaction t1 starts with acquiring a exclusive lock I am writing it LX exclusive exclusive lock on B okay so let's say this is a data item B okay and then it has exclusive lock by this data item B has exclusive lock by transaction T1 okay now transaction T1 reads and then writes whatever it does Again, here transaction T2 starts in between and it asks for a shared lock on database item A. So let's say I have a database item A and transaction T2 takes a shared lock on it. Okay, so this is shared. I'm writing it S. It is a shared lock. Fine. Now it is performing read, so of course shared lock is required. Now the same transaction T2 ask for a 
exclusive lock on database item B right so this transaction T2 request for a exclusive lock to lock manager but it won't be granted because this item is already locked by transaction T1 right this B is already locked by transaction T1 right you can see here so but it requests and request is waiting okay now at the same time it is waiting so transaction T1 will proceed now and you see that it asks for another exclusive lock on transaction on database item A so this requests a exclusive lock on database item A which will not be granted because A is already being used or it's already locked by transaction T1 although it is shared lock but if it is shared locked you can only grant shared lock but you cannot grant exclusive lock and it has requested for exclusive lock right so this is waiting now you can see that there is a waiting cycle okay T2 is waiting for B and T1 is waiting for A okay and this is a situation of deadlock okay so you can see that <coughs> for transaction T1 also and T2 both right now only we have shown is in growing phase okay and they are valid for simple two phase locking protocol that during locking phase or uh, during growing phase only locks are required so they are just acquiring locks but while requesting the lo lock only they got locked I mean they got uh, trapped into this deadlock okay so this two phase locking has problem of deadlock okay now let's see cascading rollback here in this example you can see we have three transactions okay and these three three transactions are making a schedule s okay now cascading rollback you can see in basic 2pl we can get cascading rollback so let's see this here first transaction t1 acquires a exclusive lock on variable a okay now it reads a writes a and then unlock a when transaction t1 has unlocked data a transaction t2 can again acquire a lock right so it acquires a lock here then read a it reads a this transaction t2 writes a and then again here it unlocks after this unlock again t3 can lock database item a and read it and whatever operation it wants it can perform right so you can see here we have this write on a okay and this read on a so whatever is being written by transaction t1 is read by transaction t2 and whatever is written by transaction t2 is read by transaction t3 right and you can see that these transactions are not yet committed right and this is not the rule of basic 2pl basic 2pl says once you start locking you only lock you don't unlock anything right and once you start unlocking okay in shrinking phase you need not i mean you cannot acquire any new lock okay so it is satisfying the condition but as it is not yet committed transaction t2 is reading a dirty data okay and this is a dirty read similarly transaction t3 is doing dirty read right because transaction t2 has not yet committed now if transaction t1 fails here right then as transaction t2 has read item from transaction t1 it has to roll back okay similarly this transaction also has to roll back okay and if it fails it will roll back of course okay so this is so you can say that uh, you can see that the transaction is rolling back okay all transaction I mean rollback is cascaded okay so we can have a situation where we can get cascading rollback when we are going for basic 2pl so we have studied the problems with basic 2pl the first one was unnecessary weight due to early locking second one is deadlock which we have seen and this one is cascading rollback 
okay so due, due to all these problems we will go for addition of some extra rule we will define some extra rule so that these problems can be solved so in next lecture we will study conservative two-phase locking protocol